I'm interested in, in talking about how you sort of mine your real lives for comedy and sort of like what rules or boundaries you have there. Like there's what the value is and what the dangers are. My wife and I, Bina, we, we kind of have this rule where she's like, if the show has a hundred people or less, you, you are free to open up <laughs> the idea. And then before it gets ready to like go to theaters and stuff like that, she's like, let me just see what's, what, what, what's going on. <laughs> what's happening right now and then she'll kind of just have like editing power over the Google Doc she's like alright just scratch that that's just for us don't go there ooh that's really good and um, I'll be like got it resolved you know like in the, you know, in the Google Doc you're like resolved <laughs> and then what you see is uh, kind of like it's been executive produced by both of us <laughs> she's like Gujarati Dr. Dre she's like do it again um, you once said in an interview that comedy can change people's opinions about things. I'm curious what you both think the mechanics of that are. You know, when you're laughing, like your heart is open, your mind is open, you're, you're willing to, you're receiving information that's making you feel good so you don't have time in your head to be like, but I don't know about this, and a blah, 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 let me fact check this, or like this doesn't line up exactly with my beliefs, so I'm gonna like this, you know what I mean? And so I think that's the power of comedy. Like it can really be used as an agent of change. It can really bring people together. To me, like the thing that I love the most about arts and sports. So two, two people that were massively influential on me that were heroes to me when I was a kid were uh, Muhammad Ali and Hakeem Olajuwon. And um, yeah, yeah. But what they did, I think for me, like as a young Muslim kid is they, they had so much pride in who they were and their identity. and. In those moments, I was kind of like, wow, you know, sports, art, culture has an opportunity to make people's world a little bit bigger. And because of fentanyl, overdose deaths have exploded. Now, when I first saw this graph, I couldn't believe what I was looking at. It looks like the income of everyone in Destiny's Child. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, fentanyl and uh, Destiny's Child. But that's how you reach people, right? It's like you have to, like, I always feel like I want to give the medicine with the candy. People are always like, can you make a joke about that? Can't, and you're like, you can make it literally a joke about anything. It's the way in which you do it. And laughter and tears are kind of like the same side of the, they're, you know, the same coin, in, in my opinion. They're just built on building up pressure and releasing it. I'm curious what you sort of think about now that the landscape of comedy podcasting, comedy Instagram, TikTok, Twitter is so vast. Uh, do you have any advice for people? It may seem like if you're trying to start a blog or a podcast or, you know, a live show or doing a solo show, what have you, like, oh, there's so many people. Why is anyone going to care about me and what I have to say? It's sort of like, well, you care about what you have to say. You care about what you want to do. And, like, that's what did Lady Gaga say? Nine and nine people can say no, but it's only one person says yes. So why don't? I thought you were about it's... to sing. I was like, no, what? Like I have an idea. I want to try it out. Don't put the pressure on to be like, oh, it's got to be this thing in three months. Just get fucking good at it, and things will happen. Since you both draw from personal experience so much in your comedy, do you find that strangers want to confide in you? Times that it's weird is people feel like they really know you. One time we were flying back to Sacramento to visit my parents, and yeah, Sacramento. Uh, so we were flying back, and uh, my wife was breastfeeding at the time with my daughter, so I'm holding up a blanket, and someone comes over, it's like, dude, let's get a selfie. <laughs> and I was like, nah, bro, you know, and then he just did it. No. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, don't worry, man, I'll cut her out. And I'm like... <laughs> like, there are some people, they, I, I could tell I disappoint them because I'm like, not like... Da -da -ba -ba -dee -dee. <laughs> but I'm like, they, that, that disappointment will fuel them and it will, you, you know... <laughs> have our, you know... Phoebe <laughs> Robinson's mean to someone in a bodega and they're like, ooh. <laughs> I didn't say I am, mean. I am dedicating my life to improv comedy. <laughs> <laughs> 